Facebook Live not functioning. We're good. All right. You are live. Hello, faithful Facebook followers. You know, I heard um, from a couple of different people that Facebook Live does not notify um, people. You know how you see on Facebook Live stream, you see it that faith, that so and so has gone live, that your friend has gone live, whatever. Yeah. People have told me that on Facebook Live that they don't necessarily get those those um, warnings, announcements, what would you call alerts? I knew I'd come up with the word. Just keep going, Jamie. The word's in there somewhere. <laughs> is it is it telling you that face that Biker Church has gone live? Yes. Okay, so I don't know. I don't know how you. I what I know about Facebook fits in the thimble. I like it that way. Um, but anyway, so I don't know. If anybody else did it alert you, Mary? Yeah. Okay. So for some folks, it's not alerting them, and I don't know why. So it might be settings that need to be changed in your phone or whatever. But um, anyway, folks that don't catch it live are able to catch it later. But um, anyway, a couple of folks have said that to me, so I am aware of that. But I don't know that it's necessarily not something in that individual's phone that needs to be changed um, somehow. I know you need to like a page. And I know you need to follow it. I think you have to do both of those things. Like it and follow it to maybe get those alerts. Right. So if you've only done one or the other, I don't know. Anyway, announcements. There's my first one. Fix your Facebook. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Um, what's first, Mayor? Bicycle drive? Yep. Bicycle drive. Now through um, the end of November. So I saw two more bicycles upstairs. So that's really? cool. Yeah, yeah, there's two more bicycles upstairs. Wow. Um, so if you have a bicycle or you want to buy a bicycle or a tricycle or anything on wheels, you know, and I was talking to somebody and I might have even said this last week, I'm not sure. Wow, there it is. Um, that's louder. <laughs> Boom! Echoing in my own hip now. <laughs> um, so we were talking last week after service about how these kids that we deliver toys to out in especially eastern Colorado, um, that, you know, the, a bicycle to a kid out there means, means, means they can go visit their friend that might be a mile away from their house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, bicycles out there are precious and priceless. So if you want to donate a bicycle, let me know. If you're on Facebook Live, let me know. If you want to bring it here to church any Saturday night uh, between now and the end of November. Thank you. Next. The Sons of Silence are having their annual turkey fry, and that is December 4th. That's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And um, that is in conjunction with Toys for Tots. So that just kind of piles on top of what we already have done through um, the High Country Toy Run. And they've been doing that for years and years along with Jim Ware. Um, $10 donation. And from what I understand, I think it's Lonnie that's cooking. Anyway, somebody's cooking. This is to be good. Well, it says fry. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. What's next? Oh, the Big Joseph Toy Run. That is the oldest and the coldest. Burr. December 5th. Bust out your heated gear. It's cold. They have a snow date. Their snow date is the following week, December 12th, in case it snows on the 5th. They'll do it on the 12th. If you guys have never done this, um, this toy run, it's it's long. <laughs> it's long. They go all the way from action cycles on Hancock down to Academy, down to 115, 115 to Cheyenne Mountain, or uh, to, to Lake. In through the Broadmoor, we go through yes. the Broadmoor and we make all kinds of noise in the Broadmoor. Down 21st Street, into Manitou, back out of Manitou, downtown. I mean, it's long. Um, and they get up to speed. <laughs> anyway, so that, um, that one is um, benefiting grandparents, raising grandkids, and kids in the State Hospital Children's Board. So come out to that toy run also. Um, Danny's waving his hand back there like it's important. Is not police escort. No, it is not. Nope. We might not be in the future either. You never know. What's next? Oh, ways to give. We talked about it earlier, but we'll talk about it for you on Facebook Live. Uh, you can go to PayPal, ppbikerschurch at outlook.com. Um, you can always give in person if you're on Facebook Live and you're tired of doing that, come to church. 
Um, unless, of course, you have a really valid reason, and I understand you do. Uh, and square for cards. We always have Biker Church um, swag, and there are hoodies. Hoodies are 40 bucks. We have some long sleeve shirts left. We have a couple in gray and some in black, and those are $20 each. We have some leftover uh, Blessing of the Bikes shirts that are out in the foyer, and we are um, selling those at 10 right now, and neck gaiters and headbands. There's even some window stickers out there tonight. I was cleaning out the black cabinet, as I do occasionally. Who's going to clean out the black cabinet now, Roxy? <laughs> you are. No. Must be I you. Care. Oh, Jen is. I have to pee. It's going to be him. Amen. Jen's cleaning out the black cabinet. There we go. I like it. I like it a lot. Wait. Anyway, we've always got we <laughs> always got stuff. Cleaning out the black cabinet. We have always got we've always got stuff, 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 and stuff. The faster we sell our stuff that we have right now. The hoodies, the hoodies we're going to always have in stock, just so you know, our standard biker church hoodie with the, with the wings on the back. But um, the faster that we sell the long sleeve shirts that we have and the blessing of the bikes shirts that we have left over, the sooner we get to do a new shirt. Yeah, amen. It's always fun to do a new shirt, huh? Yes. All right. Is that it? That's it. That's it? That's it. All right. Fantastic. So tonight, the um, message is titled, You Are Not Ordinary. Do you know that you're not ordinary? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dwayne's response. Oh my gosh, that was priceless. Um, yeah, we are not ordinary. We are not ordinary. We are not unique. We are extraordinary in God's sight. Amen? Amen. So tonight I'm reading from Psalms. Psalms is, some people say the middle of the book, but it's not. It's closer to the front. Psalms chapter 33, I am reading from the New King James Version, and you know, I was talking with a friend that follows us on Facebook, and, and he got uh, an NIV, and then, I, and then I was teaching out of um, the CSB last week, and he was like, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for any of you that have sat under my teaching for any amount of time, you know I'm like in every version that there is, because I like them all. Yeah. You never know where I'm going to land. Um, I never know where I'm going to land until the Spirit moves me. And then my desk at home is so fun, because it's got like eight Bibles out, you know, all of them open, and I'm like, what's this? So I encourage you to explore all the different versions because they really do speak to you in different ways as you read them. So tonight's kind of a classic, the New King James, not the Old King Jimmy, but the New King Jimmy. <laughs> Psalms, the Old King Jimmy's hard. That one's hard. All right, Psalms chapter 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen are his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven, he sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety, neither shall it deliver any by its, own, by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his mercy, 
to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. This is God's word. Father God, thank you for this opportunity now to address your people, Lord God. I thank you for this church. I thank you for this extraordinary group of people that you have called blessed. Father, I thank you that they put their hands to kingdom work so generously. And they show their love to each other so amazing. Father, I ask now that minds would be open and spirits would be willing to receive your word, your truth, your encouragement, your strength, your hope. Father God, I ask that you would just help me to decrease as you increase. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. The Lord loves his people so much. There is not a chance that anyone here, being one of God's chosen people, is in any way ordinary. We are extraordinary. Not on our own will, but because of him. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. Our God is not a God of chaos or disorder. He is a God of goodness. He is a God of order. And he is a God of dependability. Why does he love righteousness and justice? Because these things... Righteousness and just, justice bring peace to his people. He wants us to receive his goodness. Goodness is what he desires for all of creation. He made the world and absolutely everything in it. He spoke it and it came to be. He didn't make it for him. He made it for us. That makes us pretty extraordinary, don't you think? Every day, I praise God. You guys, there were so many years in my life that I did not recognize the beauty of this place. I walk out of my house every day and I see that mountain. Did you see the sunset last night? Yeah. <clears throat> he made that for us. He spoke it and it came to be for us. He desires good for his creation. He desires good for us. And he is faithful <clears throat> to those, especially to those who love and honor and worship him. He can do anything that he wants to do, anything that he wants to do at any moment in time, but he chooses to allow us the opportunity to operate on our self-will. And we have a tendency to make some messes sometimes, don't we? Amen. And he loves us no less in our mess than he does when we're acting really right. Right? And nothing that we can do in and of ourselves, cleaning ourselves up and making ourselves all right, none of that makes us righteous, does it? Our righteousness comes only from him. Amen. Amen. Our God, that is a God of order, he is never changing. We are the ones that change. The purpose of his love for us doesn't change. He loves us because of who he is. He does not love us because of who we are. He loves us because of who he is. 
and his love is never changing. And that makes us extraordinary. I know that when I'm feeling like he can't possibly love me because I am the fill in the blank, I need to be reminded constantly that there is nothing I can do to make him love me more. And there is nothing I can do to make him love me less. He loves me exactly the same, all the time, every time, because he loves me from who he is. Verses 10 through 12 in our reading tonight say, The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed are the nations who choose him. And as I was studying this week, you guys, I was, I was drawn to the conclusion that the nation that chooses him is not a country. The nation that chooses him is not a country. We are his nation. That's right. The nation that chooses him is the nation of Christians. And we are called blessed. Verses 13 to 16, the Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. He fashions their hearts individually. You are extraordinary. Every single piece of you was fashioned individually. Do you know how priceless that makes you? He considered absolutely everything when fashioning you together in your mother's womb. Before your mother's womb. Heaven looks down and sees all of mankind and God watches over all of the earth. That blows my mind. Every time I speak it, I think to myself, you know, I gotta tell you, last night somebody was trying to talk to me, and 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 I was like, I can't concentrate on crap. I mean, I was so distracted at this table, trying to focus on this person over here, and this distraction here, and God watches over everything on earth and hears every prayer. Not just the verbal ones, right? But the utterances of our spirit. He cares about every utterance of your spirit and nothing gets past him. That makes you pretty extra. He considers everything. He considers all our works. He sees the heart of everyone. Nothing and no one escapes God's eye. And he considers everything. So what is it to consider? Right? This is a big word. Think carefully about something. To be drawn towards thinking of something. To take something into account or be attentive to it when making a judgment or an assessment on something. God considers all of our works. He is drawn toward us in every way, in every area. He takes everything in our lives into account. Nothing escapes him. Every moment, every breath of your life, God considers and is attentive to it. That makes us pretty 
extraordinary. He considers everything that happens on earth and not one thing escapes his attention. Not one thing. There is not a king, there is not a president, there is not a queen, there is not an army, there is not anything in the universe that can save us from anything but God. Amen. And he is attentive to everything happening on the planet Earth. Verses 17 and 19. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. We who hope in a living God, we who hope in a living God, we are an army of peace and comfort. We are not ordinary. We are chosen. We are powerful. We trust him who can save us. We do not put our hope in worldly things. The ordinary people of the world somehow think that they can save themselves. We do not put our hope in earthly things. We put our hope in the God of the universe. What does that, what does that look like, you guys? Because the, the world puts their hope in all kinds of earthly things, don't they? And what does it look like when we put our hope in, in a horse or a king or a queen or a president or an army or something else, what does that look like? Well, take a look at the world right now and you will see exactly what that looks like. Yeah. God gets removed in those situations. And we put our hope in earthly things. And when the world puts their hope in earthly things and God gets removed, Jesus has left the building. And that's a real problem. That's a real problem. Because we can't put our hope in wrong things. If we put our hope in people, if we put our hope in faceless, nameless people with no honor, with no dignity, with no nothing, and they think they know the best for us, and we allow them to somehow be in charge of what God has not taken his eyes off of, we end up in big messes fast, don't we? Yeah. Yep. We put our hope in a living God that counts us as extraordinary people. And we need to keep our hope in that living God. We need to know that he and he alone can deliver us from Fill in the blank. Amen. Because he can and will deliver us from everything. Not some things, but everything. The world that thinks that they know the best and the world that wants to orchestrate everything with their useless ideas and their concepts on how to make a difference, they are not invisible to the God of the universe. He does not honor them or their ideas. He will not move on behalf of self-centered plans and motives. He moves on behalf of his people. And you guys, when we think he's not moving, he's moving. When we think he's not paying attention, he is considering everything that is happening, or his word would not say it. As we move through the challenges of life, we need to remember our extraordinary position as blood-bought, blood-washed children of the Most High God. Amen. And we need to stand 
on those promises. We were born to make a difference in this world. We were not born to be stifled. We were not born to be quiet. We were not born to sit back. We were born to make a difference. We are highly favored by Christ because of our faith decision to follow him. We are called to turn the world upside down. Because we're not ordinary. And we need to not act like we're ordinary. Yeah. Sometimes Christians are just shrinking back, quiet, don't turn the world upside down people, and we need to knock it off. We, are, we were born to turn the world upside down. Jesus Christ turned the world upside down. Amen. He didn't pussyfoot around on nothing. Right? Yes. He draw, drew lines in the sand, picked up stones, hung out with prostitutes, robbers, and all kinds of other people because he wasn't ordinary. And neither are we. We are not ordinary. We speak of things that the world calls silly. We call those things powerful. We are called to reproduce more blood-bought believers. And we need to do that by sharing our extraordinary faith with a bunch of people that, for some reason, don't have it yet. Part of that reason might be that they see a bunch of shrunk-back Christians. So let's show them that we're not ordinary. Amen? Amen? We live from victory. And we need to freely share that victory with other people. And we need to stand in high places and shout the name of the Lord. We need to not be afraid to speak our faith to the universe. And that whole thing about, you know, Jesus has left the building. Jesus has left the building in some churches. Oh, amen. <laughs> right? We, I, I will tell you today, I had so many people say to me today, I am blown away by this church. Amen. Amen. You know what they're blown away about? A bunch of people that are not ordinary. <laughs> they're blown away by a bunch of people that are living an extraordinary faith experience. And what that means is that you are walking for and with each other. They couldn't believe, I mean, fishes and loaves. You know, the food that we have and the way that people show up and the love that just is poured out from this place. That is what brings people to faith relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not wearing a cross on you and act. I mean, that's good. If you do that, please don't act like an idiot in public. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> we bring people to Jesus Christ by walking out our faith and showing people that being a blood-bought Christian is not ordinary. It's an extraordinary experience. We know who heals. We know who delivers. We know who loves unconditionally. And we deliver that same love unconditionally to each other and the greater community in hopes that the greater community will also come to know that faith in him. We live the best life possible regardless of our circumstances and show the world the results. Can I tell you, that the woman here today, Nicole, who lost her husband at the precious age of 48 years old, she is living her best life possible, regardless of her current circumstances, and telling people, why would I be mad at God? He is who is getting me through this. He is my strength. He is my love. The church is showing up in her life. 
and encouraging her. And that is showing the world the results of knowing she knows how priceless she is to God. She knows how much God loves her. That shows the world what it's like to be a blood-bought, blood-washed child of the Most High King. We stand in testimony. We live in blessing. We live in goodness. We live in love, grace, mercy, and kindness. And we stand in that place. We stand in those high places where he has placed our feet on the rock of Jesus Christ. We live from that silly saying of what would Jesus do? It is a silly saying, but it's not. It's lost a lot of its oomph, probably because people quit trying, I guess. I don't know. But we live from that what would Jesus do place of making mental adjustments constantly to see God's plan for us. Because life is just hard sometimes, isn't it? And when life is just hard sometimes, we have to be able to make those mental adjustments so that our spirit can make the adjustments necessary. Verses 20 to 22, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. Our soul waits on the Lord. And waiting is hard, isn't it? But our soul waits on the Lord. As we make those adjustments, sometimes we have to wait on the Lord. But as we wait on the Lord, we know that he is our help and our shield. We know that he is considering every moment and everything, every thought and every, every action in our life. And we wait on him in hope. We don't just wait on him. We wait on him in hope. We see him as our hope. We rejoice in him with that hope. And we trust in his holy name. And his holy name gives us hope after hope after hope. None of our life is ordinary. Not one moment of your life, Christian, is ordinary. Every single minute of your life is extraordinary. And it takes extraordinary faith to live in him, with him, and for him. <clears throat> Let your mercy, O oh Lord, be upon us. His mercy Church is always upon us. Always. Don't ever, ever, ever doubt how extraordinary each and every one of you are in him. Amen? Amen. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you consider us What an amazing thing that is, to know that you think upon us all the time. That every moment of our life is precious and priceless to you. Everything that happens to us has purpose. Every challenge in our life builds us into the people that you want and need us to be for you. Father, I thank you that this is quite an extraordinary little church. And I thank you for the opportunity that you have given me to lead them. 
help me to continue to encourage them and support them to see just how extraordinary they are. And let us take that out of this place into the greater community so that people will see that being a Christian, a part of your nation, is no ordinary thing. But it is, in fact, an incredibly extraordinary thing. Father, as we close tonight, one more time, I ask that you would bless Nicole, Alessandra, Andrea, Gabe, Wyatt, Oliver, and all of the Dees family. Bless them abundantly, Lord, as they grieve the loss of Dan to the gain of heaven. In Jesus' name.